Did you know that you could use Visual Studio to build SRV2? Visual Studio 98 was actually used for a very long time to build the game. I got it to build again a year or so ago, but it doesn't stay maintained, so it keeps breaking whenever uh, something changes with the build pipeline. So I thought it'd be useful for us to go ahead and pull the source code down, the current version, and we go through some of the steps that it takes to bring it up to date in Visual Studio and run. So first thing you're going to want to do is fork the code so that you have your own personal copy of it here on git.do.srb2.org. And then hit this little button down with the code and we're going to clone with HTTPS. We're going to copy that link. And we're going to jump over to Visual Studio here where we want to clone a repository. And we're just going to put it in there. And it would help if I use the right fields. And hit the clone button. And it'll start pulling everything down. Now once that's done, you'll have a whole bunch of different solution files on the right hand side. The one that you're interested in is this srb2-vc10.sln file. So double click on that. It's going to open up a lot of projects. The one you want is the srb2win project. These must be old projects back from when they used to use DirectDraw and kept them as separate ones. So srb2win is the one that we're interested in. We're not going to cover compiling OpenGL um, as part of this. That I'll have to save that for a future video. So first thing we want to do is right click on it, choose rebuild and see what kind of errors we get. All right, looks like we have 76 errors, but it's not as bad as it looks because once we clean up a few of these, they're going to cut down really, really fast. For example, here's an easy one. Cannot open source file igamepad.c. No such file or directory. So we'll go to the i folder here and look for gamepad. Looks like this is under the SDL app. iGamepad.c. Let's go ahead and remove that because it doesn't exist anymore. You know, we're saying delete, but the file isn't even there. So there's one down. We'll go ahead and rebuild it. All right, we've got more errors this time. But that's okay. Let's organize this by project. And I think I saw something else being missing, this phaptic.c. So let's go ahead over to pplay, and phaptic is here. Remove those. All right, let's see if there's any other ones that we can get rid of for the time being. Sometimes it's actually easier to look at the build logs. Let's disable treat warnings as errors. Not ideal. Um, essentially, you eventually you would like to have it be able to compile without any warnings, but that takes a, quite a bit more effort. We just want to get this thing up and running as quickly as we can. One thing that's also a nice benefit is the multiprocessor compilation. To enable that, it'll build a lot faster. Let me try it again. So it's, all, it's nearly done. All right, let's see what else we have. Oh, it didn't build after all. If you want to enable the multiprocessor compilation, you also have to disable this minimal rebuild right here. 
and it's definitely worth it because a lot of times you're just rebuilding the entire project. Let's go ahead and rebuild, and it goes really fast now. Sometimes you'll get these things, but potentially unwanted, you know, an uninitialized local pointer variable. It's a new CMD, that's because it's being used right here, and up here it's just declared without any initialization. So an easy way to fix that is to have it equal null. I think this has something to do with the version of C standard that's being used between compilers, and Visual Studio uses a different version, so there's a couple little things that have to be modified. Another issue here is you get this, which is actually a warning, it's not an error, 4146. Um, so we need to suppress that. And so the properties here under advanced disable specific warnings, we need to add that number, 4146. And then we will build it again. All right, this one, potentially uninitialized local peril, local pointer variable, which, so we'll do a search on that. Let's see where it gets declared, right here. It's another one of those situations where it could end up null and it's not initialized to null. So we'll just do that. We'll skip over these ones for now, we'll come back to them. So they have to do with the curl. It's another one of those potentially uninitialized variables. Easy fix there. These are part of the OpenGL project. Let's unload that. We'll see where we are now. Eh, 56 errors, not too bad. Getting closer. Unistandard.h. Well, it turns out Windows doesn't even use this. So we can go up here, and it looks like there's a define preprocessor macro, so we can do this, if not define underscore win32 and if. So that'll re disable that. Let's go ahead and rebuild. If we get zero errors, we should get to the linker phase at this point, and then we can resolve linker problems. So we have 55 remaining. Unresolves external symbol Lua open. It's probably a few files that have changed here that end up not being included. So let's just take a look. One thing that can be handy is to use this find in all files, but we're gonna change to look into a directory instead. So we're going to look in a custom folder. We're just going to look in the entire repository here. All right, let's look for the first one. Lua open underscore OS. And it looks like it's loslib.c under blua. So we will add here blua. LOS lib. Add that. Let's rebuild again. Lua color lib is missing. Well, that's part of the gameplay code, not the Lua library. So it's going to be under this Lua folder. It's probably Lua underscore something. We don't even need to search for this. Lua underscore color lib. There it is. 
we'll add that in. Let's do another one. Down to 53. Are thing bounding box visible? So let's do a search for that. Do we see any C files? rbbox.c. Let's see if that's added under the R folders. Nope, I don't see a bbox.c, so let's go ahead and add it. Right there. And was there an H file along with that? This may as well do it just for completeness. No. All right, compile again. Down to 43. Okay, these look like curl issues as well as libpng issues. So we need to fix those next. So what that means is curl's been added here, but it must not be in uh, in the pro it was it wasn't added to the project. So that's what we just have to add it to the project, and everything should be great. So if we look in the main folder of the repository, you'll see there's this libs folder, and inside of there you'll see curl and a lot of other things. So this is actually what we need right here: curl include. So this path right here we need to have is an additional include directory. Also, um, this is, can be a really rookie mistake, is make sure you're on Win32, not x64. The project will probably default to x64, you need to have it on Win32. And that will also affect um, what are in these property pages as well. So if You'll see you can do all configurations, but you can only do one platform at a time, unless you choose all platforms here. So let's go to the C++ settings and add the additional include directory. That's going to be this right here. There's also a preprocessor definition that we need to add in here. Have curl. You can see that at the top of this file right here. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, so we're getting linker errors at this point. So we need to also add the curl static library, which is going to be under lib32. There's a libcurl.a and libcurl.dll.a. We may only need to add one of them. We'll see here. First, add the library directory. And then we will add the additional dependency. We'll try just the dll.a for now and see if that works. All right, we're down to 18 errors now. And all of the errors have to do with libpng. So we've taken care of our curl problem. Because a lot of these errors have to do with deflate, it kind of makes me suspect that um, zlib might actually be the culprit, not libpng, since that compiled fine. So we're going to go in the repository here to the libs folder again, zlib. Oh, we've got a win32. And there's a libz32.a right here. So let's go ahead and copy this path. And just like we did for curl, we're going to add that as an additional path for the linker up here. That input, additional dependency, libz2.a. Double check that file name, libz32.a, yep. Okay. 
Y, and let's rebuild. Oh, it's getting to the, to the last step now. And it looks like it succeeded. So let's go ahead and test this. Let's go to our folder that has our SRV2 installation. And we're going to use this as our working directory. So it'll pull and work with all of these files. So we'll go back to properties, go to debugging, the working directory. We're going to change this. Command arguments. Let's start in a window. I like to have no mouse, no music, and no sound might also be a good thing. Well, we could keep the sound. And we'll start the debugger. So there you have it. You can build SRV2 in Visual Studio now. I'm going to actually do a pull request or merge request for um, the changes we did here. Bring the current version up to date so you can just pull it and compile in the future. And, and until it breaks again, well, at least now you know what to do.